Welcome to a new tutorial part of this Django series where we're building a filtering form. In this one, we're going to be building the actual HTML form itself, and we're going to be using Bootstrap to do this. And so if you'd like to follow along, you can just go to our DJ filter GitHub repository. You can clone or download this, reset back to the code at this point. And once you've got everything set up, then let's get started. So I have my server running and we can see this in the browser. Currently there's no URL or views handling anything. And so we're going to get started by creating a view inside core. So we'll go to core views and here we'll just say define the bootstrap filter view, meaning we're going to be building this with bootstrap and it's just going to take in a request. And currently we're just going to render the request to some HTML file, which we'll just call bootstrap form.html. And we won't pass any context in, then we can take that view and we'll bring it here into the URLs. So from core.views import bootstrap filter view, and then we'll add a path here, which just goes to the root URL and say, name is bootstrap for example and now we just need to create a templates directory and add this into the settings so if we scroll down to templates here we have to say os.path.join and we're going to join the base directory with the templates directory and then inside the templates directory we can then create the bootstrap form.html and if we take a look at this now now there's nothing displaying but that view is actually rendering the HTML and so we're just going to go and get bootstrap and we're just going to use one of the examples here so we'll click on examples and we'll just go to the starter template and I'm just going to view the page source and then we'll take all of that and we'll just paste it all here, except these links here we're not going to be using. So we need to get the actual CDN links. And then here we'll just copy these links. And then we'll grab all of those as well. And we can also delete these styles and links there as well. And we'll get rid of these scripts. And then we'll just paste those there. Cool. And we can then close those off. And I'm just going to go here inside this main and we'll just create an H3 and say filter journals and if we take a look and okay nothing is showing at the moment but that's fine we're going to add the form in and as soon as we do then everything should start displaying so we'll just start by creating the form and we're not going to be doing this using the Django forms we're rather going to be building this ourselves with custom HTML the reason for this is just because it's a little bit easier, I find, in terms of styling the form. So you don't have to worry about passing in all kinds of arguments to style the form built by Django. Instead, you just build it in HTML and then we handle receiving the request on the other side. And the same kind of thing applies in React. If we were using React, we wouldn't be building the form using Django's forms. We'd be building it using the UI and then handle the request using Django. So that's what we're going to do here. So the method is going to be get and the action is just going to be to the URL that we're on right now, which is dot. And now if you want to know how to style bootstrap forms, you can then just Google for bootstrap forms and we can see how they do it. And here we can just go to the first link 
And so here we basically just want to scroll down to layout. And if we scroll down, you'll see there's form grids, form rows. And then there's this form here, which I'm basically just going to copy everything inside it. And then we'll style that to match what we have. So we'll just paste everything in here. And if we take a look at this, then here's our form and we might want to just inspect this. And if we were to just add some margin top and say like that, that should be good. And we'll just copy that. And we'll just come back to the top here and add template.css. We'll say body just like that. And then we will link our style sheet here. So we'll say static and this will be template.css, but we'll need to load static to do that. So we'll say load static. And now if we come back, refresh this. And okay, we're using templates. Let's make this singular like that. And there we go. Cool. So now we basically just want to style this form to match the data that we actually want to filter. So we're going to start this off with a few basic fields that we're going to enter. And if we just take a look at the models again, we can close everything else. So we'll just go here to models on the journal. We have those fields that we created and we're going to filter the title with an I contains and with an I exact. We'll dive into what those mean later. We're also going to filter by the author. We're going to filter by categories and everything else. So we basically want to create inputs that match each field and are also matching the kind of data that that field holds as well. So for example, if we wanted to filter categories, we could do this in a lot of ways. You could filter it by typing in the name of the category. You could do this by just using a select field, or you could do this with check boxes, but it depends on how much data you're going to have. So if you had a thousand categories, then you obviously would not want to use a thousand check boxes. You'd rather use some kind of search field because it's not practical to list out thousands of entries of something. Whereas if you know that you're only going to have 10 categories, then you could use a select field. And if you were only going to have two options, then you would use a checkbox or a radio option. And so when you think about it like that, then you narrow down your options of what kind of inputs you're going to use for each field. We're going to add three for the title and author. We'll start with search bars. So let's go here to the form and we're going to add its own row. So let's just copy that there. And we're going to create a form group. So we'll say class equals form group. And we're going to say column 12 so that it takes up the entire row. And inside here, we're going to have another div, which will be an input group. And then we'll put our input and here we'll just say class equals to form control. And we're going to add some other classes as well. Don't worry if you don't know this off by heart, by Googling, you'll see these answers on code pens and other forums of how to create HTML elements. And we're just going to add those styles there. We'll add the type as search. And I'll just say that the placeholder being the first search, this is going to be searching by if the title contains. So we'll say title contains just like that. And then we'll just put a span here. And this is basically going to have an icon in it. So here we'll create another div and this one will just be class input group text and it will have a background of transparent and we can close that div off as well. And let me close off these as well. And then in here we'll go and put 
a font awesome icon. So what I'm going to do is go and look for font awesome. And here we'll say start using free. And I'll just copy that link. And then we'll just paste that in there. Then we can go back to our form. And here inside this div, we're going to have an I tag and the class is going to be FA search. So for the search icon. And if we take a look at this now, we can also close that then. Okay. We're just missing a class here on the span. So this class is input group append. And if we refresh that, there we go. So there's our search bar and we're going to just basically copy that three times. And the first one is going to be for title contains. Then the next one will be for title exact. And then the last one is going to be searching either by title or author. So you could enter the author's name or you could enter the title of the article. And so if we go back and refresh this, there we go. There's our three search bars. And lastly, we're just going to enter one last form row, which is going to have a select for the categories. And then we're also going to have two fields, which will be the minimum view count and the maximum view count because we have a views field for the published date. We're also going to have two date fields, one as a kind of published date minimum and a published date maximum, which is basically just whether the post was created before or after certain times. And then the reviewed is going to be a checkbox. So if we take a look at this, we're basically just going to convert this one row into four fields, which will be minimum view count, maximum view count, minimum date and maximum date. And then we'll have the select and then we'll have the check. So if we go back this here, we're just going to change to column medium two, and I'm going to copy this as well. And we'll make it column large two as well. And then I'm going to get rid of those form groups there. And we can actually take these two out of that row and we'll get rid of that entire row there. And then I'm going to get rid of the city and we'll paste those there. So now we have, let's say minimum view count and we'll just copy that and this will become maximum view count. Then we have the category and we'll just leave it like that as well. And then I'm going to cut out that zip as well. We're not going to need that. And we'll just copy these two again. And this will be publish date minimum. And we'll copy and paste that again. And this will be maximum. And if we take a look at this now, there we go. So we'll fix up the wording now. And I'm just going to go and fix all the placeholders and the IDs and it of everything. Okay. So I've changed the placeholders here, but I've left the publish date minimum and maximum as they were. And the reason is because if we take a look at the type of input, they are their password, and we're going to change this to be date type inputs. And that means that we can actually get rid of those placeholders. And if we take a look now, you can see that you get this option to select the date. And like this, we're actually receiving the data in a format that we want it to be in. Of course, there's plenty of date formats that you could take as input, but this is just an example of one way of doing it. And then lastly, we can also go to the view count. We can change these two numbers and we can say min equals zero on both of them. And if we come back then this way, if we come and enter minus one, then we get some validation there saying that it must be greater than or equal to zero. So that's pretty cool. And lastly, we can change the check me out as well. We can change this to be 
reviewed. And this is because again, we have a reviewed field on the model and it can either be true or false. So either a checkbox or a radio option works perfect over here. And we'll just change the ID here to be reviewed. And then lastly, we can change the sign in button to be something like search. And if we take a look, there we go. Cool. So that is the layout of the form, at least for the basics. And then the next one, we're going to get started with actually posting this data and doing some basic filters on the other side. So if you've enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.